stop pulling? Is that what you said? Stop pulling. Stop pulling. Just the tip. Just the tip. Stop pulling. Sit back and enjoy the ride, boys. Oh, sit back and enjoy the ride, boys. So, uh, hi guys, this is our soft opening, also known as Sako Japan. Are we on Facebook? Really? We should be on Facebook. Are we not on Facebook? Are we on? Yeah, we are. Yeah, Come look on, at man. Everything's uh, right. I did it. It get says out of here. we're on. Oh, yeah, there we are. There we Some go. Some people look like us. Yeah. They're, they're emojis. <laughs> yeah, I'm the poop emoji. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, get emoji. Oh, my God. We were in here just, just gossiping away before the show. We were having Dr. Hey. Day. Was if there's anybody I'd listening right it. now, we were probably talking about you. Where your ears are burning. That's <laughs> the truth. <laughs> oh, boy. What are you doing, Tess? Oh, she won't speak. She She's did like, it herself. She's <laughs> the one who does all these crazy things with the headphone cord. And, oh and, yeah! Well, uh-huh. so she's braiding it. I know she braided into a wonderful Girl Scout braid the last time we were here. It was, it was a Girl Scout braid. Well, it's something we learned in Girl Scouts. Yeah, you should see what she can do with shoelaces and. Uh, <laughs> He has. Wow. And zip ties. He yeah. has. I know, right? Zip ties? We learned that in Boy Scouts. <laughs> mm-hmm. Anyway, you tonight, take two on a date. Uh-huh, and you come back with one. <laughs> what? Wait, what happened? <laughs> okay, so we're supposed to talk about foot pain tonight, I yeah. believe. Isn't that the deal? So we'll do that. Um, oh, man, Charles Grodin died. Yeah, Rest in peace, bad. old Who's dude. that? Yeah. What? Beethoven's dad. The dog. Oh, I thought you meant like <laughs> Beethoven. Beethoven. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Well, Beethoven predeceased him. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm pretty sure Dog Lives, yeah. yeah. Oh, you mean the other one. <laughs> yeah, Midnight Run? No, that was a good movie. Uh, what was another Charles Grodin? Let's see. Oh, uh, Seems Like Old Times with Goldie Hawn. That was a good movie. Yeah. Yeah, So, and a good football player as well. Rest, uh, rest easy, 88. That's not really all that. Could yeah, it is. Better. It's old. Is it? Well, it is when you're my age. Okay, fair Thanks. enough. <laughs> All right. That's right, you had a birthday. I had a birthday. Right, and we got the I cupcakes to cake. prove it. I am. What? All right, guys, get online, share if you care. We get ready to start the shindig off, and who knows where the ship may go. That was a ship. Ship. Oh, good. With a P. Okay, hey, With look. a P, yes. We all like That's P. when you want to pop your P's. Yeah, most definitely the plosive was important there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for noticing. <laughs> Stand by. Live from the Connections Studio Suites, it's Connections. Connections Connections is Relationship Radio. Welcome to another informative and educational and slightly entertaining show called Connections. What? That's it. I'm turning the channel. This is stupid. Who wants to learn anything? (laughs) That's uh, Lizzie said what. She's a pain in my bum. Yes. Uh, Hashtag in front of that, Lizzie said what. I am Melissa Fox, two X's, and Dr. David Klein is here with us as well. With no X's. No X's. Oh, you kidding? I thought you have at least one. I got one X. There we go. (laughs) Tess is over there going, "Mm -hmm." Uh Uh that's the new wife. Uh I'm so excited about this topic because Foot I've paid. S- okay, do you know how hard it was for me to do that stupid promo poster? Mm-hmm. I didn't see the it was, promo You didn't poster. see it? Oh, no. hold on. Uh, oh. I hate feet. Feet are so disgusting. She's not a fan you of have feet. Two. You have two. That's of great. Them. They can stay right there in my tennis shoes. Foot pain stinks, man. Well, so do feet much, much of the time. They shouldn't, though. If I know. If you keep your feet properly and you change your socks, which is very them? important, and you wash your feet. True. Yeah, you know, they shouldn't smell. But the feet, 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 Lizzie, they're the foundation. I may have to leave. (laughs) No. (laughs) Melissa, put your feet down. And Dr. Dave always takes his his shoes shoes off off every time he comes in the studio. Well, it makes me comfortable. It makes me me feel like... you should feel no, like the guy feels like he's at home That's because good. he is. He pretty much owns this uh, everything, the whole show. <laughs> it's sponsored by Stages of Life That's Medical right. Institute. Brought to you by. Right? It. The only foot pine I've ever had is in my butt. Well, some, somebody else's foot? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, well there's there Bud. Fast. Yes, right, <laughs> hey, right. Bud, where's the rest of you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so foot pain, though. very It can be you know, well, normal it's a, it's a things. Whole, yeah, there's a whole division of medicine devoted to nothing yeah. but foot problems. Foot podiatry. 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 Uh-huh. Podiatry. So, yeah, so it's a whole bunch of, of physicians that do nothing but fix people's feet. So there's enough business out there. There's enough pathology. There's enough misery out there yeah. for an entire type of schooling. 
Mm. You have four years of education plus postdoctoral in dealing with foot issues. Mm. And it's the sort of thing that most physicians spend very, very little time discussing, which is probably why podiatrists do as well as they do, because it's hard to find somebody that understands what the heck is going on when you come in complaining of foot pain. So if we're speaking to 1,000 people right now or 10,000 people right now, about 20% of the people listening in, Mm -hmm. that's a lot of folks, are going to experience foot pain on a daily basis or at least on a regular basis. And it can be any number of different things. So what I wanted to talk about were some of the more common problems, things you may not think about, to try to debunk a couple things and then try to enlighten folks as to what they may be able to do to keep from getting into trouble. Would one, so, of, would one of the problems be <laughs> the type of medication that you're on? You can make the foot hurt with medications. You most certainly can. Wow. You really? can make your feet hurt with certain types of hormonal issues. Improper can, shoes. Yes. How about eating the wrong food? Nah, that's not true. It's oh, true. Most certainly. It's true. Yeah. You should it's, see what asparagus does to my feet. Well, you're supposed to eat it with your mouth, not your feet. Oh. However, okay, so, yeah, there are many ways of causing the feet to hurt, but also to do other things that are less, uh, maybe, you know, less interesting. But what I'm going to start off with is going to be something along a metabolic line. Mm. Okay, it should be something that folks consider because by the time your toe starts to hurt or feet start to hurt with this particular problem, your kidneys are already on their way out the door. And what we're going to talk about is gout. Wow. Gout. So you're so. Oh, no. You're, and this is real important gout? to you, Lizzie. Oh, yes. OK, this is this ought to be near and dear to your heart. OK, yes. because one of the things that causes feet to hurt mm-hmm. is uric acid crystal deposition within the tendons, the bursa and the joints of the feet. And it doesn't always present as it does in these little etchings and whatnot that come out with you know, the rich old guy sitting up with his foot on a pillow and his toe, his right great toe or left great toe is swollen and, you know, allowed to, to, to air to the elements. No, it's absolute nonsense. Okay, most gout issues don't present that way at all. They'll walk around and they'll just simply say, well, my feet hurt. It must be diabetic neuropathy because my feet hurt oh. and I have diabetes. Oh my God. Sound I familiar? Want, yes, because I want to punch him in the face every time he says that. Right, and it's, mm. not, it's not typically <laughs> what you think it is. The treatment of gout cost about $11 a month. Mm -hmm. But by the time you're starting to see uric acid crystals form around the joints, those are the feet and elsewhere. They're also, and they have also formed in your kidneys, causing what may be irreversible kidney damage. So the trick is to understand what's going on, not because it's convenient, not because it's um, gonna give you a a leg up, as it were, in in a race, but because it may save your life. So what are we looking at? Okay, so gout or even just elevations in uric acid that don't present as gout. It's called hyperuricemia without, without gout symptoms. There's actually a disease called that. I wouldn't have named it that, but that's what yeah, it's, it's called. Not a great name. So what do you do? Well, the first thing you do is you get routine blood work. And this, this is something that we used to do. Routine blood work used to be done routinely. Mm-hmm. So in addition to the electrolytes, things that we need to make sure that your sodium, potassium, chloride, and CO2 are normal or within mm-hmm. some kind of range, we also checked something called uric acid. But we stopped doing it. So is it the typical blood work doesn't look for uric acid issues? And the reason for this is very, very simple. It's called money. When the insurance company stopped paying for, for these Chem 6s or mm-hmm. Chem 8s or Chem 12s, and all you could get were electrolytes out of this thing, people stopped doing the assays. Because why would you necessarily increase your cost of doing business if they're ratcheting the, the reimbursement downward? All right. Consequently, the public took a hit. Oh. Well, isn't that interesting? So why am I interested in, in, in gout pain? Because I have this problem. Yeah. Okay. And I thought that I was, I was going to end up needing a surgery on my foot, which I ended up getting eventually for something else. But it turned out to be controlled with $11 a month worth of allopurinol. Oh, My kidney really? function improved. Now, that's not supposed to happen. But now my, my, my what's called an EGFR is that of a 20-year-old. Hmm. as opposed to a 67-year-old, by getting the uric acid level down. And I've been able to do this for many, many folks that are in what are called stage 3 kidney disease. You bring down the uric acid levels, and don't you know it? The now, kidney how, well, function now how improves. do you bring down, how would you, like, is there something that you're eating, drinking, that could potentially raise your uric acid? Brilliant question. Okay, so question. what happens is this. There's, there's something, the, the disease called gout increases a chemical called purine. 
-hmm. These purines are the ones that turn into uric acid crystals, which then cause the disease. So by eating diets that are, are less rich, let's say, in purines, that diet tends to help. So what do you avoid? Oh, this is the one that kills everybody in the, uh, beer. Beer? There's a ton of purines in it. Okay. Uh, and then things like fish, shellfish, meat, red meat in particular, wine. So if you look on the on the on the um, if, you, if you go to the to the internet and you okay. want to look up gout diet, you'll be able to see what you should or should not eat. Mm -hmm. So okay, so beer. Now I've heard beef. I heard beef, beef. Red meat. Red meat is also will raise your 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 acid. So these it's called a rich man's diet. Well, the thing is, in in this country, <laughs> rich okay, man's diet. anybody mm -hmm. with food stamps is is eating a rich man's diet. Right now they are. <laughs> right. Yeah, uh, that's just the way it works. So it's no longer. Well, gee, we're gonna have we're gonna have uh, beef or meat or whatever <laughs> once a month. Roof. Now it's like, yeah, let's go down to McDonald's and get ourselves a, a uric acid burger. So that's kind of what, what we're able to do. <laughs> that so, awesome. So what I, what I started to do is I started screening everybody coming through the door for uric acid. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's in like an $8 test. And it's shocking the number of folks that have elevations in uric acid. And not only do their feet somewhat hurt, but pains in the shoulder, lower back, hip, and elsewhere. So yes. I had a left-sided shoulder problem, which I would have sworn yeah. okay, was a rotator cuff tear. Because I had torn my shoulder playing uh, rugby. I was a semi-pro rugby player, and I was playing against Philadelphia. I got my shoulder separated, and I've had pain mm. in that area on and off ever since. Right. Well, wouldn't you know? So I start myself on the allopurinol. My left foot pain gets better. And the reason I started the allopurinol was that I was hobbling across uh, A1A in Fort Lauderdale going to a lecture that I was giving, and I could hardly make it across the street. I had to go back to the hotel and sit down. Oh. Uh, Tess, who I was dating at the time, said, well, gee, you know, maybe you need to do something about that foot. I'm thinking, okay, I hardly know you, but maybe I'll do something about that foot. Uh. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, it was our second date, and we went to Fort Lauderdale for a weekend. Aww. And so Second date? Wow. I'm just kidding. I mean, I, I, this was this. I'd been dating her for at least two he weeks. Is. No. So, <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. The Twist. Connections is Relationship Radio. Wow, we are back very fast. That was awesome. That was a quick that turnaround. Was one quick break. Hey, welcome back to Connections. Melissa Fox, hashtag Lizzie said what. And Dr. David Klein, who's going to put a foot in our butt if we don't take care of our feet. We were talking about and are talking about foot pain. You were talking about some sort of old blah, 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 yeah. acid. Yeah, uric acid. Your oh, and there so, it is. So, <laughs> so my thing was, was I, I went ahead, you know, it, I was going to get my foot operated. I couldn't stand it anymore. So Tess said, well, let's go get take you to, to the surgeon and get it operated on and just get it over with. However, is there anything else you might be able to do? Because I'm concerned about being off for six weeks if I have to have my foot operated on. Mm -hmm. I mean, I work pretty darn hard. I'm on my feet all the time, running right, back and right. forth like a lunatic. So she, you know, she goes, well, what, can, what else can you do? And I said, well, there's an outside possibility. It's something like gout, but I doubt it because uh, you know, my uric acid level is not that high. Not as high as I was led to believe that it would take to cause the issue. So our education may not have been so perfect. So she said, what do you do? And I said, well, I'll start you know, some allopurinol and see how it goes. So we were at the uh, Publix, you know, getting some kind of food or whatever. And so I stopped by the pharmacist and said, hey, look, can I call in a prescription? She, the pharmacist says, of course, Dr. Klein. I said, allopurinol, 300 milligrams at bedtime. Could you please dispense 30? Who's the patient? Me. Ooh. So I walked out of there with a, with a bottle of, uric, of uh, allopurinol. And then a couple of days later, I warmed up to the idea of trying it. And then three or four days later, my foot pain was better. Now, the interesting thing was, was my shoulder pain went away and my lower back pain got better. So I have a hernia disc at L5S1. Mm -hmm. It was causing me pain. Couldn't hardly move around very freely. Mm -hmm. And it got better. Uh -oh. Now, why oh, is this? Uh, and, and people say, well, that doesn't make any sense. You're lining up your body? It, no, yeah. that's a possibility. But really what happens is, is that uric acid crystals form when there's inflammation already there. So it could be infection. It could be trauma. It could be, could be, could be, could be. And in this case, a herniated disc causes inflammation. Crystals form back pain. 
take care of the crystals when you know it's the pain the disc is still there i still can't feel my left foot but i can walk pretty normally my shoulder i can reach up overhead i can do anything i want to do with it mm. to include throw a tennis ball which is something i hadn't been able to do in 30 years and it's just the way it goes so sometimes these things fall into place so gout can cause foot pain second thing is a certain types of entrapment neuropathies very very common so females they get pregnant their feet swell something more interesting happens is they become functionally hypothyroid so they'll develop tar uh, carpal tunnel syndrome bilaterally it means t you know tingling in the fingers bilaterally what they don't talk about too much is the tingling in the toes that goes with it tarsal tunnel syndrome the tibial nerve goes behind the medial aspect of the ankle and innervates the bottom of the foot and the toes. So when you're hypothyroid, having numb toes or tingling toes or funny feeling as you walk is extraordinarily common. And it's treated by fixing the thyroid. Huh. So foot pain from hypothyroidism. I can't tell you the number mm. of folks that have gone in oh, wow. and had Morton's neuroma removed from their toes only because they were hypothyroid. Oh. So surgery on the foot should follow a good endocrine workup. And I mean a good one, not, not the, the, the garden variety stuff, but getting in there and really figuring it out. Salt retention will cause the same type of uh, feet to swell, and that will also cause nerve compression. Oh. Diabetic neuropathy of the feet. Hmm. This one just cracks me up because people come in at my office all the time. Well, gee, you're a specialist in pain. What do you know about diabetic polyneuropathy? Yeah. I say, well, I'll tell you what. Odds are you don't have it. Okay, most people with diabetes don't have neuropathy in the feet. They may have pain in the feet, but so do half a million other people with it without diabetes. Right. So what is it that can cause pain in the feet that goes along with blood sugar that is not diabetic in nature? And the answer, again, gets back to hypothyroidism. Hmm. Because individuals that are, are diabetic or pre-diabetic are far more likely to also suffer from thyroid disease. So you get right back to fixing the thyroid. And don't you know that the, the foot pain gets better? That's crazy. It seems like everything always goes back to the thyroid you, problem. Well, thyroid is a very common problem. Mm -hmm. There are others. So when we're looking at foot pain, you can't just simply go ahead and take the first diagnosis that's thrown at you. So if you think for a minute, okay, that going to a singular doctor and getting a quick diagnosis, well, gee, if you're diabetic and your foot hurt, you know, your feet hurt, it must be diabetic neuropathy. Odds are that person is not taking a great deal of time to figure this out, nor would they necessarily understand that it takes 20 years of diabetes to develop neuropathy in most circumstances. Oh gosh, that's a lot of It takes a attention. long time before the, you know, the, um, the sugar issue burns those nerves. But, okay, yeah. now I want you to but think wait, about this for a, a second. There's a bright side. There's more. Wait, oh, wait, there's, there's more. A bright side. There's you know, for more. an additional fee, you get a second disease here. All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> <and> not included. <laughs> yeah. So I want you to imagine that, 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 that life has blessed you. And, and if you woke up one morning and you were living in Florida, mm. as hard as that is to believe. Uh. Okay. Now, in Florida, I'm told that people don't wear shoes the way they do up north. <laughs> Mucklucks, heavy true. boots. Yeah, now we don't, you know, it, it, it's, it is true. In fact, okay. they, they tend to run around in flip-flops, uh -huh. sandals. However, oh, yeah. okay, one of the things that happens <laughs> here, family. okay, which is kind of interesting, Ugh. is because we don't have a lot of mud here like they do in the Northeast. Mm -hmm. During the winter, it's one big mud hole. Spent too many years living there to, to believe yeah. anything else. I know it. So, <laughs> women tend to run around with, with shoes that are strappy and they have heels attached to them. So, that throws your weight forward. Now, up north, they would Not say... this girl. Yeah, there you go. Well, yeah, okay. Mm, so either. what it does is it puts your weight to the downhill ski, doesn't it? Okay? Mm. So when you, when, you put, when you put height on your heel, it puts your weight forward. Great for skiing. The pumps everywhere were ski boots. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know, I, you know it's, it's just the way these things work. Right. What that does is it throws your weight forward into the anterior portion of the foot and starts damaging nerves like the deep perineal, which innervates the great middle toe. Okay. It's also the one the that gets nailed by flip-flops. As opposed to the semi-adequate middle toe. There you go. Yeah, well, that, with an <laughs> inferiority complex. All right. But that area... Well, the that, rest of the piggies felt left out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it's the same area that gets nailed with uh, flip-flops. Sure. Okay, so here in Florida, we have a different I constellation. Don't use those, kind. those kinds of flip-flops? Yeah. I, oh, I don't... The toe that, separator? That's all I wear. I can't. I can't wear them. Because your feet hurt. It makes my feet hurt. Right, okay, because <laughs> the deep perineal's taking a hit. <laughs> So is this fixable? And the answer is yes. Stop wearing those damn flip-flops. Not necessarily. Okay, but you can fix it with topical or transdermal anticonvulsants. It's something that you apply a couple times a day and the pain goes away. It is kind of cool. 
There are others in the ankle. So let's say you went ahead and you twisted your ankle. You go to the orthopedic surgeon. He says, you twisted your ankle. That's called a sprain. You have an ankle sprain. I literally do it all the time. I said, I don't ever go to the doctor. because That's smart anyway. No, 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 no. No, because from being a former gymnast. Like, my ankle, well, I'll roll and pop my ankle all the time. I'm like, oh, son of a bitch. Yeah, well, what's you know? it, but what, what like, happens, okay, as a result of... Uh, was, like, whatever. It, yeah, <laughs> when, you, when you pronate your ankle like that, uh-huh. okay, it stretches something called the extensor retinaculum, which pinches two nerves. Now, when you nice. pr- pronate, does that mean you get a month off at the end? <laughs> that, that would be a postnate. What? <laughs> I mean, we, oh, we got a laugh I, out of uh, yeah. Yeah, Marcel Marceau laugh. in the corner. There is laughing. Yep, my yeah, she won't take a microphone, but she will chuckle. Now, see, I've <laughs> torn, I've torn my deltoid lig- ligament before. Yes, that's an immediate aspect. Yeah. Okay, but the lateral is the lateral uh, is, is the extensor retinaculum. It's a little bit more commonly torn. Okay. So, but there are two nerves that pass through there that will cause pain along the top of the foot down to the toes. Hmm. So, how do you fix those? Same kind of a deal. Identify the problem and use your topicals. So there are many ways to damage the feet with regards to nerve issues. So I used to to uh, I I used to lecture on things. We would call this really crypto. Used to I still do. (laughs) But it's called cryptogenic pain or pain of uncertain you know etiology or we can't figure out what's wrong with you. Oh yeah. The Mm. the department of I don't know. And so these I don't know. These these are my favorite things. Okay, and they're common. They're very, very common, but they're not so easily diagnosed. One that is easily diagnosed that is sometimes not quite accurate is something called Morton's neuroma. Now, that's a little bit of a nerve growth between the toes, usually between the second and third, sometimes Mm -hmm. third and fourth toes, and rarely between the fourth and fifth. And it goes between the toes and it causes foot pain. And you want to just rub your feet and make them feel better. So the podiatrist and orthopedic surgeon say, well, it's a Morton's neuroma. They come in and they cut the foot from the top open the joint up, it's not really the joint, but it's the area between the the, the metatarsals, and then free the nerve up. And even sometimes even cut a piece of the nerve out and say, there's the neuroma. There's no neuroma. If you look at the pathology, it's, yeah, it's nerve all right, but it wasn't a neuroma. It was an entrapment just like carpal tunnel. You don't remove the median nerve for carpal tunnel, and you don't take the digital nerves for Morton's metatarsalgia. And we'll pick this one up after this music. (laughs) <laughs> yes, after this quick music, this quick interview, music break. You're listening to Connections <laughs> Relationship Radio. Oh my goodness. Yeah, we'll talk about that and more foot pain coming right up on Connections. This is Connections. That was awesome up to a point, and then it stopped becoming awesome, then it was horrible, and then it was back to awesome. If we get splattered with blood, that's an honor. All right, it's pretty obvious that I'm not good at this, but just for the record, it's because I'm a lover, not a fighter. All right, get your foot out of your butt. Here we go, talking about foot pain, not butt pain. Ah, We're back. We're back. We're we're back. Yeah, uh uh-huh. We're talking about foot pain. Um, Here's the thing with with foot pain. um, It hurts. (laughs) Yeah, no kidding. Uh, Yeah, that it does. Yeah, thanks. I'll be here all week. Uh, (laughs) Seriously, no, I, I... We've talked before, but I've had serious issues, uh, born with flat feet, which nowadays I don't even think the kids get tested for that. No, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter. It didn't matter then. Did it matter? It never did matter. But, I mean, it just looks horrible whenever you're trying to wear sandals. I mean, like, that's, I think that maybe one of the reasons why I don't like to wear flip-flops and sandals is I'm flat-footed. So what? And it just looks like a big blob on the ground. Well, (laughs) aren't arches kind of necessary? They're necessary, if you have them. If, if you don't athlete. have them, you are not necessarily going to suffer very much from them. Plenty of athletes have flat feet. Do they really? Yeah, it's just the way that it works. Hmm. Yeah, does it cause ankle pain? Yes, it does. Does it eventually Why? cause arthritis? Oh, absolutely. Why in the 60s and 70s was there such an emphasis that I had to wear clunky shoes for five years? Uh, it's a wallet biopsy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so they extract these <laughs> green no. pieces of paper from your wallet and exchange ugly shoes for my, them. My That's parents right. really didn't want to hear that. Yeah, no, but <laughs> they're probably not listening if I, you know, if yeah, I've yeah. got this right. If you're right. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so flat feet, really not much of an issue at all. Okay. There are people that will argue differently, but, you know, the Army used to, to consider you 
Yeah, they didn't it's care. Undraftable. They didn't care. They uh, just no, shoved me in the back booth. In the no, 19, they wouldn't let I got shin splints, and then I had to be you. in sneakers. They I know. Needed you for they some need, reason. I know. They needed me. You're I like agree. a superhero. Yeah, Something like that. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure why they would need you, but they did. And so uh-huh. my dad was excluded during the Second World War because he had flat feet. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't understand. Never that. made any difference. He lived in '92 and was on his feet almost the no, entire time. No, but the time. flat feet and the boots is the problem, really. The boots are not made for people who don't have arches, and so the army boots kill your legs. When you're running short personnel you change your boot design mm-hmm. that, would <laughs> right. Right. Oh, yeah. that seems songs. to me to be the answer to that problem that's a good well point. gee let's make a different kind of boot for those people yeah so you, oh. if they make different size boots you can make different morphologies in them as well so what other sorts of things will cause foot pain that may not have anything to do with the feet so you can have tendonitis issues in the knee that will cause foot pain Hmm. There are muscles that two muscles in particular that run behind the knee go down into the ankle that will cause pain in the bottom of the feet, the arch of the feet. Something that you might see as, you know, gee, I have flat feet. That's why it's hurting. Odds are it isn't. Odds are it's that muscle behind the knee. Uh, Very interesting. A neuroma, neuralgia, entrapment of something called the saphenous nerve, which is up midway up the thigh, will cause foot pain. Typically, great toe, sec- uh, second toe. And you would think that it's something else entirely well that looks a little bit like gout also but it takes something very special extraordinarily expensive test called a physical examination to figure this out it's It's called putting fingers on the target to figure out whether or not it's the trigger now can you do this with telehealth i can't imagine no although i did a radio show at one time where i would examine people on the air and I'd tell them, okay, now hold your, your foot, your right foot in your knee and hold it in this particular position. Take your left hand and do this, that, or the other. You're playing and Twister then, on the radio again. No, yes. well, kind of. Until, <laughs> until I had somebody who was doing this while they were driving across a mountain. <gasps> and so, yeah, so I decided I wouldn't do that anymore. So I won't do that here either. That's probably a good idea. Thank you. Yeah, you we have our, people drivers in Florida are bad. Well, I had no. Yeah, what am I going to do? Say, okay, pull over. Yeah. I, I, no, I was I was on uh, evening drive time. Yeah, no. <laughs> you know, Beautiful. it's that's called. Here's thin- your sign. No, I was reminded oh. by the by the show co-host that that's called thinning of the herd. Yes. So I figured, well, <laughs> you know, your listeners I wasn't way. necessarily yeah, going to do that anymore. So, so there are lots of really cool problems that will cause foot pain. Mm. Things from metabolism to nerve to joint, to tendon, Mm -hmm. to muscle. What else will cause your feet to hurt? So let's say that you're, let's say you've got elevated cholesterol. Does that cause your feet to hurt? And the answer is no, no, but taking the statins, your feet will hurt. Mm. So if you don't know the relationship between the disease, the medication, the treatment, and the the side effect, you may miss that. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk our way through, uh, let's just say an average kind of an individual that will walk through the front door. Hmm. Okay. So you've got yourself a, um, let's say a 26, 27-year-old female. Mm -hmm. Okay. Otherwise, you know, slender, normal build. Okay. Pain in the feet. Where does it hurt? What's your problem? Well, I can't wear... I can't wear the shoes I want to wear. Um, you know, it causes pain to the bottom of the heel. Mm-hmm. It aches. I can't, you know, I can't do this. I can't do that. And so then you, you say, fine, sit down, kick your shoes off. And what do you see? So very, very typical picture right here is a, is a, a gal that likes wearing high-heeled shoes, okay, with heel straps. With heel? Uh, okay. The rub from the strap, the strap causes degeneration of the Achilles tendon behind the, the heel. It causes a bump. That bump eventually degenerates and causes tendonitis and rupture of the Achilles tendon if it's allowed to persist. They call them pump bumps for a reason. So the rub from the shoe or the rub from the, from the strap will then irritate the tissue in the posterior portion of the heel, something called the Achilles tendon. Mm. And then that, in turn, causes cystic degeneration. Which is so why I, Lizzie and I don't wear heels with exactly. straps. Well, nor do I. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. you know, you'd look so, good in a nice pair. Well, I've been told. Mm. So, yeah, so, so these nice are the ankles. very, very mm. typical patient. Or you end up with an obese individual, okay, who comes in, you know, 55-year-old man. I'll pick on, pick on a guy right pick now. Pick on a guy, will you? Okay, who works, let's say, you know, at... Uh, the loading dock at Walmart. And wears okay. heels? Not necessarily, but he's going to wear he's going to wear uh, steel-toed shoes. <laughs> oh yeah, the boots, yeah. Okay. So the oh. guy weighs, I don't know, maybe 250, 260 pounds, 5 foot 10 and he knows that he's a little bit overweight. That's not Is that overweight? Please kick your shoes off. Let's get a look. See what's going on. And so what will happen is you've got a guy here, okay, who's not necessarily um, particularly erudite. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, not not under, not in great understanding of the world or what's going on. Explain erudite oh. for Lizzie. She just faded over. I did. I was like, what does that mean? Well, what's what's erudite mean? Okay, you know, it's a, it's scholarly. Aware, scholarly. Okay, it's better. Okay. Okay. All right. So you have this individual looking at you. All right, and you try to figure out what they do yeah, for take a living. Down Lake County well, what, level. what do you do? Oh, this this is more Monroe County. County. Oh, okay, so you know what Lee do you County. what do you, what do you, there you go? What do you do? Well, I work on the on the on the loading dock. On the loading dock. Okay, so if you if you've ever worked on a loading dock, which I have got to say I've never done. Okay, oh, you understand well, that part of your workers' compensation deal is you wear steel-toed shoes or boots. You don't run run out like flip flops as I do. Hmm. So what happens to somebody with weight on them towards the end of the day that wear these sorts of uh, boots? Their heels are. Uh, Their heels killed. take a beating. Mm-hmm. So does the, so does the front part of the sho- uh, front part of the foot. But more interestingly is that you'll start seeing swelling of the feet. Now, women very, very frequently will go their entire adult life never changing their bra size. Lizzie? I don't know. What? Never changing their bra size? Yeah, what does that have to do with feet? Because it's the same thing. So they'll come in, and I'll treat chest pain from a a ill-fitting bra, and I ask them, so what bra size are you? And Same when I wore when I was in high school. Key concept. No, no, no. That's exactly it, correct. You, it, but it, you change because your weight fluctuates. Bingo, except people don't. And so if you don't think hmm. about what you're doing, you get into a habit. So the habit is, what's your shoe size? My shoe size I thought was 10 and a half D. Turns out it's actually 11, 11 and a half E. And so my feet were hurting at one point because my shoes were too tight. Why? Because I was too cheap to actually buy them at a proper shoe store and have somebody so that knew what they were doing measure them. Now, what he's basically saying is with it. the bra, if you spill yes. an ova, you should probably get resized. Well, how many how many how many women do any of you listeners know that that if you if they wear a bathing suit and you just have to imagine that being their bra and then look in their shoulders and see something that looks like the, the great gorge Never on each of the shoulders. No, okay, no, that's the back fat. That gets the back you. fat. Yeah. Okay, you, you look along you the side. Cle- back cleavage. Okay, yeah, side, it's too side, tight. yeah, side, you know, side indentations. Okay, side this boob. means well, side, side gorge. What happens is, is that you are not being sized properly. Hmm. When the shoes don't fit, you must quit. You must quit. <laughs> well, you know, and it's true. It's funny that you bring that up because my mom was eighty-one years old before she found out that she has two different shoe sizes. Her oh, feet are two yeah, different that's sizes. Another. Is she? Is she still? She still living? No, no she, she passed away in twenty nineteen. Okay, she, because we all have two different sizes. Yeah, yeah. Really? Once, yeah, usually, <laughs> I have a half size smaller than the other. No. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, we would we would undisappoint her very quickly. She's, oh, she's, she, well, she, she no, made, she was so excited that she found out because we oh, took her. Oh, then I wouldn't. To, have, I would not have. Yeah, we took her to yeah. a special. Why should your feet be the same size? Are your hands the same size? Yes. No. Yeah, mine are. They're not. Um, I can promise I'm you. I'm perfect. No, they're You're not. You're perfect in every yes. other way. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so they're foot. Really so foot pain is is is. You know, sometimes it's self-induced shoes. Yes. Sometimes it's self-induced mm. shoes, and very frequently it's self-induced c- the kind of work that you do. Mm. So, what can you do as a as a um, as a hobby or for vocation that's going to tear into your feet? And you don't have to say, "Well, I got to play soccer, play football, running, walking, running, running, Standing. jogging." Walking. Well, how about going to the gym? Oh yeah. What can you do at the gym that will tear your feet up? And the answer is, is how about the elliptical Treadmill. cycles? Mm-hmm. How about the stair stepper where you're on the forefoot and you repeat, 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 and it tears into the forefoot very neatly. Or let's say you're doing leg lifts. Okay? So the forefoot's really not intended to be to push off against five hundred pounds. You know, I like the ones that you have to lay on your back and try to roll your yeah. leg. I hate this. Those are the worst. The music again, that means we've got to go into a break. Oh, that's true. Man. Stick around. Yeah, stay right there. We got one more and one more segment or we'll put a foot up your No, wait, what? <laughs> different problem. Problem. No, that's different. We can remove that. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> no, there's there's a way. Uh, Dr. David Klein is with us tonight. We're talking about foot pain, but he can handle all the bases. So check him out. Sages yeah. of Life Medical Institute dot com. Be right Brooke. You are a god. A god of a special universe where no one thinks of consequences and where those of us constrained by intelligence and common sense are not allowed. There's no business like show business like no business I know. Oh, sing it, Tom. Everything about it is appealing. Welcome back. Wow. There's some pomp and circumstance there, right? Uh, uh, all right. 
Okay, yeah, we're the stars of stage wax and video. That's correct. That's us. It's Connection Show. Talking about foot pain, and uh, we're getting to the, the uh, well, the basis of the issues here, and we're wrapping up as well. Dr. Klein, feet. What yes. about the toes? What if you don't have a toe? Uh, you just fall well, you over? I mean, if, they, if they're cut off? Yes. Removed? Yes. It changes something. It changes a lot with regards to your gait or the way that you walk or move along. So, yeah, there's not much you can do once they're cut off. The real trick is keeping them. Uh-huh. I so, almost lost a toe. Really? Yeah, I'll frostbite my big That'll toe do it. on my right foot. I have no feeling on it still, so sometimes I wobble yeah. and trip on the carpet. Nerves will regrow typically about a millimeter a day, and then sometimes they don't, they as yours don't. didn't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So... There are other things that can cause foot pain that Skipping are a little bit north. more unusual. <laughs> okay. You know, one that comes up periodically is called Paget's, uh, Paget's, Paget's disease of the bone. Mm-hmm. Okay. You'll end up with these little benign bone tumors. Mm-hmm. Okay. Ooh. Do you do anything Tumors. with them? The answer is no, not, not typically. Not unless they pause a problem, right? Fractures. Mm-hmm. Okay. Or something we want to consider. So you can say, well, no trauma. However, walking or any distance sometimes, some, sometimes just going out and just overdoing it can result in a stress fracture. Fifth metacarp, uh, metatarsal can be a vulst that's very painful, and it really hurts up against the shoe in particular. Yeah. So here in Florida, we are blessed that we may not need to wear shoes to work if you get a note from your doctor. But up mm. north, you're free yeah, to freeze. pretty much. Well, you know, yeah. the going, girls up north, slush. they wear the sneakers, and then they change out to the heels at work. So they really don't wear the heels more than just tramping around the office. And I do mean tramping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yeah, no, here's another question. Yeah. I, have, I have broken my little toe so many times, I don't even know why I have it. Well, it's too bad it doesn't have a <laughs> loss of sensation, is it? You got no. any loss of sensation in the wrong, wrong in toe. In the wrong toe. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm like constantly like clipping the bed or something. You ever done that? Like, boom. Move the bed. Yeah. Uh, no, it's uh, <laughs> it's uh, in the wrong it's spot. Just in the wrong you spot. Know? <laughs> yeah. Well, fractures. So second uh, metatarsal can be broken. It's called a March fracture. Fourth yeah. metatarsal, same kind of a thing. There are many ways to do damage to the feet that you may not see. Hmm. You come back later on and do an X-ray, and you see, uh, you, know, you start seeing where the bone is healing. Yeah, a stress fracture once from trying to kick a door in. Why, why were you doing that? Yeah, yeah. Well, the door was so shut. Was there a fire and, going on? And I couldn't get the door open, and um, I was locked out, so. I hate when that happens. You need to use your elbow yeah, or shoulder. Yeah, generally. No, shoulder. my shoulder's no, already messed up. So, yeah, yeah I didn't realize I it, but I your fractured. I bought this thing, you know, at the flea the market. Yeah, the cops used to use it to, like, ram doors yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's. Battering the, ram. The battering ram. Yeah, it's kind of neat, Just actually. carry it around with you. Yeah. No, I keep okay, it in the car. Up? No, it's too heavy to, to it's carry. It's a little heavy. Those things are <laughs> yeah. kind of heavy. But you never, know when you, you never know when you need to get in through a, a door. So you, know, you know what I have realized from you, at Dr. Dave, <laughs> all these years, is you have a product called Kink Ease. Oh, yes. And that is that, amazing on feet. Yeah, it, it's, well, it okay. Is. It's it's an anti-inflammatory that mm. you, you just, it's inexpensive. You put the, the, a pump or two of this stuff under your feet. It goes through the skin in about 30, 40 seconds. But what's neat about the feet and kinkies, K I N K E A S E, to be con- not to be confused with kinkies, okay, <laughs> but kinkies, but it's also about half of what we sell goes out as a foot t- uh, tenderizer, the skin tenderizer. Yeah. So yeah, so you put the stuff on your feet and the skin softens. Oh. Yeah, See, it's not- that's that's I, I've actually put a little bit that I had in like a smaller bottle for a coworker who was yeah. having feet problems and they're it like, works quickly. it is the oh, best yeah. stuff it ever. Really, really, you get a you get a good. And it smells good too. Yeah, yeah. actually, it, it's interesting. It smells better than the feet do. Typically, well, feet shouldn't smell. No, feet shouldn't what, smell. El- what what you know what else it's good for? What? Okay, and this is another foot problem that can cause some misery. These cracks in the heels. Ooh. Okay, you know, so that the, the, the uh, heels tend to get a little bit. I see uh, cal- women walk around like that. I'm like, Ugh, yeah, what is, what is going oh, what? The on? Crack, crack, the crack, 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 cracked heels. heels. Yeah, well, first things, Isn't it's a good hurt? idea to go Shluff to a get a, a pedicure, yeah. and they'll shave much of that off. Yeah. But frequently, people have a hard time getting rid of this thing. So you well, use yeah. the kinkies; it gets into the callus itself, and then the the callus can almost it's wipe like off. Fluffy, it sloughing. wipes it off. It sloughs it off. Sloughing. It takes a couple of weeks, but it, it works beautifully. An extra ten bucks at the massage, and they'll take care of those feet. Too. Our listener, uh, Lynn Evolves, yeah. as asking, does kink ease expire? No, I it's didn't me- think it does. S- but it's methyl sulfonyl methane. MSM is a simple molecule that right. doesn't break down into anything else. Yeah, just make sure. Yeah, you if you've got it, just use it because you it's made better. it thicker. I have a, a thinner one with the viscosity on the one. I dropped now the I viscosity. Just, um, yeah, what happened was is that, that when we first started making it, and I, I thick- started thick- making this stuff in my oh, kitchen. Okay. Believe Thickness. it or not. Thickness. Thank you. Yeah. God, you guys use these big words, and I get so lost. Then you can charge more. So yeah, viscosity, thickness. It's like it's like motor oil, you know. So the the the, the uh, weighting 
on the thing has it uh, indicates how thick it is. Right. So, but I thinned it out to make it a little bit easier to apply. Right. Right. So you know that it worked out pretty well. We also changed the scent from cucumber to a little bit more lavender. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I did notice better, that. Yeah. 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 So Kinkies is great. You but we make it, it on to five tons at a clip. So it's made in this thing that looks like a stainless steel cement mixer. Hmm. And so then we, we plunk it out. We use it for all kinds of different things hmm. to include transdermal drug delivery because it'll pull other things through the skin. So, but the heel's kind of interesting. Okay, hmm. this is a very, very common problem. So what is it that keeps those cracks from going away? And it's typically a growth of, of uh, fungus within those cracks. A what? So if, yeah. you, if you get this. Foot what, fungi. Foot fungi. Oh. Skin fungi get in there, cause irritation, that get, gets red and okay. starts to hurt. How do you get rid of that? Well, that actually is not as hard as it looks. You can't so wash you can, yourself. You, you can wash, dry, <laughs> and then before you rack out at night, you apply either gynolotrimin. And I like gynolotrimin. Um, or, you know, it may say clotrimazole, it may say terbenafine for athlete's foot, but you pick any one of a dozen different antifungals and you use it, it topically, and then it'll work. Generally takes four to six weeks, and then what you do is you switch to another antifungal. Oh. You switch. So you may go from clotrimazole to terbenafine, you may go from there to tolnaftate, you may go from there to hmm. a grape, uh, grapefruit seed extract, which is one of my favorite things, or tea tree oil. There are lots of ways to kill fungi of the feet. Hmm. What's neat about that is a lot of folks that have issues with smelly feet, it's actually a bacterial overgrowth. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you use tea tree oil and soap, it'll nail spray. the fungi, but it will also knock the smell out. Yeah, the tea tree oil is actually it's really marvelous good. marvelous stuff. We use it on the bulldog, too, because he's got that little bit of eye fungi. To have yeah, on, so. tea tree oil is interesting, interesting stuff. So we use a lot of that at stages. So in conclusion, foot pain, bad. Foot pain is, is, a, is a misery, and it doesn't necessarily need to, to ruin, ruin your life. Back in the day, they used to have these strange-looking buckets where you would soak your feet in Epsom salts. Does it work? And the answer is, of course it works. Yes, it works. Why don't we do this anymore? Well, because it's inconvenient to soak your feet for 20 time. minutes. Gotten Who has time to it? soak your feet? And it yeah. used to be a thing. The guy come home from work. We'd have a bucket of water, the hot water and the Epsom. Just sit there. You eat your, your, your wife would, get, would make a highball right. for you. You'd sit back, soak your feet. and, right. and Have yeah. a cigar. Yeah. Yeah. Why something not? Why not? TV news. I, I've always wanted to learn how to smoke cigars. What are so, talking about? Uh, yeah. Well, we're... Yeah. So... <laughs> Foot pain's a real deal. It, it, it's it's not necessarily something that you need to suffer with. Go but it to is a something. podiatrist. There are Podi good stores out there, though. Like uh, well, the Good Feet good Store. Good Feet Store. He's yeah. great. Marvelous mm. people. So the trick is, is take good feet, good care of your feet. They'll take good care of you. True. The pathology is something I take care of. Stand tall, people. Stand tall. But check your shoes. <laughs> check, or in my house, check your shoes at the door. Yeah, check your shoes at the door. And we, we like that, too. Dave, it's been a lot of fun. Dr. It's, David Klein, uh, Lizzie. Good yeah, night. Everyone, bye. It was a pleasure. Uh, thanks, guys. Thanks for listening. Love you. Mean it. Uh, let the laughter start. Laughing time is over. There you have it, boys. Case closed. You've been listening to Connections. Find tonight's show and replays of our past shows on ConnectionsShow.com. If you're 65 or older and Medicare is your...